Good morning, and welcome to our continuing series on fine poetry. Today, some poems of May Sarton. Now I become myself. Now I become myself. It's taken time, many years and places. I have been dissolved and shaken, worn other people's faces, run madly as if time were there, terribly old, crying a warning, hurry, you will be dead before what? Before you reach the morning? Or the end of the poem is clear? Or love safe in the walled city? Now to stand still, to be here, feel my own weight and density. The black shadow on the paper is my hand, the shadow of a word as thought shapes the shaper falls heavy on the page, is heard. All fuses now, falls into place. From wish to action, word to silence, my work, my love, my time, my face, gathered into one intense gesture of growing like a plant, as slowly as the ripening fruit, fertile, detached, and always spent, falls, but does not exhaust the root. So all the poem is, can give, grows in me to become the song, made so and rooted by love. Now there is time, and time is young. Oh, in this single hour I live, all of myself, and do not move. I, the pursued, who madly ran, stand still, stand still and stop the sun. The Phoenix again. On the ashes of this nest, love wove with deathly fire, the Phoenix takes its rest, forgetting all desire. After the flame, a pause, after the pain, Rebirth, obeying nature's laws, the phoenix goes to earth. You cannot call it old, you cannot call it young. No phoenix can be told, this is the end of the song. It struggles now alone against death and self-doubt, but underneath the bone, the wings are pushing out, and one cold starry night, whatever your belief, the phoenix will take flight over the seas of grief. To sing her thrilling song to stars and waves and sky, for neither old nor young, the phoenix does not When a woman feels alone, when a woman feels alone, when the room is full of demons, the Nukta tribe tells us the old woman will be there. She has come to me over 3,000 miles, and what does she have to tell me? Troubled by phantoms in the night, 
Is she really here? What is the saving word from so deep in the past? From as deep as the ancient root of the redwood, from as deep as the primal bed of the ocean, from as deep as a woman's heart sprung open again through a hard birth or a hard death. Here, under the shock of love, I am open to you, primal spirit, one with rock and wave, one with survivors of flood and fire who have rebuilt their homes a million times, who have lost their children and born them again. The words I hear are strength, laughter, endurance. Old woman, I meet you deep inside myself, there in the root bed of fertility, world without end, as the legend tells it. Under the words, you are my silence. Leaves before the wind. We have walked, looked at the actual trees, the chestnut leaves wide open like a hand, the beech leaves bronzing under every breeze. We have felt flowing through our knees as if we were the wind. We have sat silent when two horses came, jangling their harness to mow the long grass, we have sat long and never found a name for this suspension in the heart of flame that does not pass. We have said nothing. We have parted often, not looking back as if departure took an absolute of will, once, not again, but this is each day's feet, as when the heart first shook, where fervor opens every instant, so there is no instant that is not a curve, and we are always coming as we go. We lean toward the meeting that will show love's very nerve. And so exposed, O oh leaves before the wind, we bear this flowing fire forever free and learn through devious paths to find the whole, the center, and perhaps unbind the mystery. Where there are no roots, only fervent leaves, nourished on meditations and the air, where all that comes is also all that leaves, and every hope compassionately lives close to despair. For my mother, once more I summon you out of the past with poignant love, you who nourished the poet and the lover. I see your gray eyes looking out to sea in those Rockport summers, keeping a distance within the closeness which was never intrusive opening out into the world. And what I remember is how we laughed till we cried, swept into merriment, especially when times were hard. And what I remember is how you never stopped creating and how people sent me dresses you had designed with rich embroidery in brilliant colors 
because they could not bear to give them away or cast them aside. I summon you now not to think of the ceaseless battle with pain and ill health, the frailty and the anguish. No, today I remember the Creator, the Lion-Hearted.